This is another video in our series in databases in Delphi and how we can interact with a database table from the Delphi environment. And in some of our previous videos, we've looked particularly at a locate function, which allows us to find one particular record. Now, if you are doing RT in grade 11 or grade 12, some of the exam papers might say you cannot use the locate uh, function. So this is a way that you can do the locate basically searching for one particular record without actually using the locate. And we're going to use basically the algorithm that we've learned from the previous videos, which is our going through all the records in a database, our traverse algorithm. But there's going to be a slight variation to it. So remember, this is the variation that you want to find a particular, particularly one record. So we're going to be using an ADO table. So we can, in this example, we can use TBLCD, um, which is going to be on another data module, which we'll show you when we get to the actual code. And the first step, like we normally do, is to go to the first record. And then the second step will be loop until we reach the end of the file, looking for this particular record that we're doing. The, the scenario that we're looking at here that's going to be slightly different is that we don't just want to stop when we're at the end of the file, because we only want to stop at the end of the file if we don't find it. But if we do find it and we know we're only looking for one record, then there's no need to carry on looking once we have found it. So that's why we're going to stop once we have found the record that we are looking for. And then the third step inside the while loop for this uh, looping part is to obviously move to the next record. So we've got videos that explain that algorithm particularly, but this is a slight modification for how do we find one particular record. So let's get into the code. So here we've got the example that we've been working through through the last few videos. And just a reminder, we have a data module. There's our actual unit for the data module over here. And there we can see our connection and our ADO table. Um, there it is, TBLCD. So we are basically con working with this TBLCD that's on the data module called, I think it's called, if I click here, DMCD. So that's what you must remember. So we're going to click on this button. And basically, we're going to type in over here, we're going to type in one of the CDRDs, and we're going to search just for that particular one. Now, in this case, because we are searching for the primary key value, we know for a fact there'll only be one record. So that's going to that's why we're using this algorithm so we want to care we want to look for that one record display some details about that particular cd but if we don't find the cd we want to just say at the end hey, that cd doesn't exist so those are the two dynamics that we want to look at so let's look, click on the button here so i've already done the input for us so we're going to work with remember the the tado table is on a data module so we're going to use the with clause dmcd with dmcd do so that we don't have to type that in every single time that we are using the ADO table so that's the end of the width okay so remember our first steps our first steps is tbl cd dot first I'm just going to type in our regular algorithm or well, not forced first um, I'm just typing our regular algorithm that we normally use while not tbl cd dot end of file and then we would have a begin and end and right at the end of the while loop, let's just to say that this is the end of the while. I like writing these comments so that I know what the ends are for. Yeah, we're going to tblcd.next. Now that is our regular algorithm that we would use. And if we are looking for this particular example over here, S input, then over here we would say, okay, we need to search for that particular ID. So if, so let's type in here, if tbl cd and we're looking for the cdrd field if that field is equal to the input then what are we doing well then we can display what we have found so we can show a message if we want to show the message show message i want to show the artist and the the cd title so tbl cd artist uh, plus a comma hash let's put, uh, artist and we'll put in tbl cd and we want the cd underscore name so let's add just one of those particular details cd underscore name so we find in one particular cd there we go and we display in its details now this looks very similar to a previous video where we were going through a database table and finding multiple records that match our criteria. So this would technically work 
Okay, so let's see if it, what, if it runs. Let's see, let's see, it should technically do what we are looking for. Once it compiles. No errors, hopefully. There we go, don't think so. Looks all good. There we go. And let's have a look. So if I'm looking for CD number 25, Search for that CD. Do you see it's moved to that CD? It's told me that it's stained. Break the cycle. So we know that it works. Okay. The problem here is when I click OK, you see it carries on to the end. So it carries on looking, even though we found what we're looking for. The other problem is if I type in something like this, if I type in 160, which I know there isn't a 160, and I search for a CD, it doesn't do anything. So those are the two scenarios that I don't like. I don't like looking for something when I've already found it, and I don't like not being able to say, hey, there was we didn't find what you're looking for. Um, especially if the CD was you too, you still haven't found what you're looking for. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this up a little bit. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to have a Boolean variable. So yeah, let's put in a Boolean. Let's call it be found. And this is going to be the indicator of whether we have found what we are looking for or not. So I'm going to, by default, I'm going to initialize this to false. So I'm going to say we haven't found it yet. And the moment we find it, then we can set be found to true. So there we go. So that's the one thing I'm going to add. So we're going to add this little bit. So we initialize a found algorithm, a found boolean, or thin ghost. And when we found, when found, we set it to true. Okay. So what does that do? Well, well, that allows us to determine if something wasn't found. So right here at the end of the algorithm, when I've finished the loop, when I've done all the loop, if I get to this point of the code and be found is still false, then it never became true, which means it was never found. So then here I can say if be found is still equal to false at this stage, then I can show a message saying not found. So that's a nice little error message. I'm just going to make it look exactly like that. There we go. So if it's if the be found is false, which means it was still false when we get to the end of the loop, which means it never became true, which means we can now say this is if never found. So that's what that's going to do. So that solves our one problem, which is means if we find if we look for something that's not there, it's going to at least tell me that it wasn't there. So it's going to go through everything, oh, it gets the end, oh, it wasn't found. So that's the one dynamic. The other dynamic that I still want to solve is I don't want to carry on looking once I've found what I'm looking for. And so we're going to interact with this be found again. I want to carry on looking for two scenarios. One, until we are at the end of the file, but the other scenario, I don't want to carry on looking when I've found it. So while we are not at the end of the file, keep looking. And at the same time, while be found equals to false, you can keep looking. So I do and over here. So if both of those are true, we will keep looking. The moment one of those is false, okay? If one of those don't trigger, then this algorithm will stop. Okay, so this basically says, okay, not while we are not at the end of the file, if, that, if we get to the end of the file, this will stop because one of them is not true and so we are the end. But if we found it, we will stop this, this looping and then it'll jump over here and do whatever we need to do. So that's where we can stop what we do. Now there's a little trick here as well. I'll just show you something to be aware of if you are ever going to use this. So if we say 25, so we're going to search for the CD. Boom. It says we found what we're looking for. Look at the point. It's at number 25. I click OK. It moves to 26 and it stops there. Okay. So that, so th there we go. So it does work, but it does move to the next record. So and it does stop looking what we're looking for, so that's great. The little if you if you want to do more stuff over here, if in the event you want to work with the found item, then ideally you want that pointer to stay with the item that you have found. And to do that, all you have to do here is put an else. So you only want to move to the next record if you are looking for something else. The moment you found what you're looking for, don't go to the next record. This will stop, thankfully, because of the be found equals to false. That will, because it's true, that will trigger, which means it'll stop the code. It won't be an infinite loop, but at least the pointer will remain at wherever we're looking for. So if we want to work with it over here, if we want to do more code with that particular line, we can. So let's have a run through it now. 
That's the more efficient algorithm. So if I type in 25, search for it, it finds what we're looking for. Okay, and it stays there if we need to carry on, maybe want to edit something or change something. So there are lots of uh, programs or questions that could ask you to find a particular record to edit it or find a record to delete it or something like that. And it's one particular record. This is the algorithm I particularly recommend. So the only real differences is obviously we've got this be found alg um, Boolean variable. We added this. Please take note of the brackets. Make sure that you've got brackets around that whole thing. Because if you only put brackets around th this, then the not could apply to both of them. So make sure that you've got the brackets over there. And when you find what you're looking for, set be found to true and then use else we go to the next. Those are little just tweaks that you can do to your regular algorithm to make sure you've got a really efficient searching for one thing. And now you should be able to find what you're looking for. So now you're not you too anymore. For more videos in this series, as well as other videos on IT and cat related content, please go to our YouTube channel, click on that subscribe button, click on the like, we'd love to hear from you. So leave a comment. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.